Today. Yes, we sure do. What do you think, guys? What do I think? I think I'm ready to tear this down. Ready to tear it down. I bet you are. How See, many miles has this thing got on? 184,000. Oh my gosh, that's pretty good for one of these 6 l 80s isn't it? It is. It is. Well, what kind of problem did it have when it came in? Do you remember? Um, converter shutter. Converter shutter. Converter shutter. And the fluid smells burnt. Oh Looks burnt. Has a lot of glitter in it. I'd say that's contaminated. And uh, we're praying for the best. We didn't have no codes in this one. We did check everything out, so everything checks out in the electronical part. So we're going to get it apart and see how bad the mechanical failure is. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. You know I'm always we're, we're doing this opposite. I've never had him record and me tear down. So this is new for y'all guys. Got our JMBX. We will be putting a heavy duty Sonex converter in this. BNI torque converter. They do build those, but get the product from Sonex. A lot better. Got a lot of wear on our hub there. A lot of wear. I can't smell, but I can tell you guys, I can't see it. It's, stuff. it's pretty smelly. We're going to go ahead and get our TCC O ring off. And I mean, it just broke off right there. This is your lockup O-ring, squared. I mean, not even round anymore. I should have felt that. I bet it was just felt almost flush right there. So I like to take all of our, oh, got the wrong one. All of our pump bolts out, but one. Here's one. Leave that last one in there. Yeah, I'm glad they got away from that Torx head style bolt on that on these. Yes. The 406 e to me, that was just a terrible style. We, we went to the uh, later version on the Torx style bolt, and to me, that wasn't much better. No, I don't to think so. We have had to beat those out. So we've got our seal here for our cooler line. This one, and then I'm this is two here as you stab your lines in they seal here and then seal around this as well double insurance i'm sure diesel oil right there guys there's a bucket in the good spot yeah. okay just making sure all right guys y'all ready for the surprise yeah, let's, look in the pan. let's see what this bad boy looks like i'm excited <laughs> No, it makes the tear down or the rebuild a lot, a lot longer, more time consuming. You just got to go over thing every, twice as much. Yeah. Oh, we're going to let go of that. Wow. There's some glitter in that. I flipped it over and it's probably over here in this old corner. It, it got, extra. oh yeah, it's all down in there. Filter stopped up. Oh, yeah, you just see the flake. Sense. Oh, look Look at the flake in the fluid. It was pumping that. Oh, yeah, you see it there? Mm-hmm. Wow. They thought they didn't drive it very far, but it seems like it. this one got pretty far. So, of course, our initial first thing we want to do to disconnect the valve body from our main connector here is we're going to press on this clip here and press it up. Then we are going to grab right here on our edges. We're not gonna twist. We're just gonna pull straight out. And this thing looks like it's, oh, there we go. I want it to crush my hand. It comes right out. This actually keys ways into our Tecum. So you don't wanna turn it. What, are you gonna show them, Dad? Oh, you're good. oh okay. Oh, yes, sir. We're going to disconnect our neutral safety switch here from the Tecum. Because when we take our bolts out, it comes off as well. We can take our parking linkage and stuff off here. Your, yeah, linkage. This is what you hear your I call it detent, detent cable. Call it. Yes, sir. Detent. Multiple things you can call that. Yes, sir. Okay. 
We've got our main torques here, inverted torques. Need to replace my uh, O-ring and clip. Okay. It looks like to be all of them. These are special bolts. They are longer than all of them. I thought I got them all the way out. I will tell you one thing. I like my electric. But we were talking about it the other day. We're going to have to do a speed teardown side by side. And I promise you, air will always beat electric. I have to give it to him. He likes using his air. Yeah, we talked about it. Uh, that air will just zip them bolts up so quick. It does. It does. I just run away from him with the air. <laughs> he, he will. <laughs> he, he will, most definite. So we've got this is our Tecum valve body, neutral safety switch. We've got our in and or our input and output speed sensors. We've got all of our seals here that connect it to the actual body. We've got another set of seals here. Actually, that's to your pump. This to your internals here, to your center support. Set that to the side. Got our one last pump bolt out. And we should just be able to grab this and this come right out. I'm really curious to see if uh, we're going to have to break out another one of our new AC Delco pumps. Yeah, I know. Seems like all of them have had to have them here lately. Well, what's good about it is uh, if you look over on the top, you can see a Sonex box. Uh, that's got our new printer in it. Our, uh, Brackets and all that kind of stuff in that box. Yes. Uh, so we can mount it to a bench and start uh, boring out the pressure regular valves and the pump stators and stuff. Because you can buy, you can buy these bell housings and these stators free machines, but we haven't found any that come with the PR valve uh, uh, re rebooking out. So you're going to have your way there. That from Sonex. So now we know uh, we can do that no matter what. We can put an oversized valve in there and be done with it. And it doesn't mess with none of the way the transmission works either. Yeah. Are we praying? <laughs> Are we praying? Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that's probably we can probably use that, guys. That's just surface area here. Our biggest deal though is going to be in our boost valve and pressure regulator valve here area. This is where it's going to be major problems. We're going to go ahead and here. Let me uh, set this to the side. I'll have to go ahead and throw that over there. And you got to be careful when, say we're reusing this one or even a new one. This just sits here and you press it in and out. This pin, you flip it over. You accidentally grab that. Here goes your pin. You've lost it. So definitely be it's sure, a and it's a little bitty pin. It's made out of stainless or something. It's a hard little. Dude. Definitely. So don't lose that. Very yeah, important. The battle wire ain't gonna work for you when you go back if you lose it. Here's your boost valve, a little four ringer. We will be replacing this with a. Uh, this is our Transgo stuff here. We yeah. like Transgo, and then we do have our Sonex pressure regulator, pressure regulator valve kits too, yeah. to be replacing this. And this is normally the problem. And it's going to be. Is it? Oh, it's, oh it's gone. Look at that so this is what it should look like on the very bottom, but it's not. I mean, it is totally gone. So tell me this transmission couldn't control the pressure. Look at the end of that right there. It's gone. It's for plumb out. Now, if you look at the new Sonex valve. Let me yeah. No, you're good, Dad. Just talk loud so they can hear you because I got the mic. Here, we'll just bring it over here. This is a, uh, a replacement valve that you can just put right into the uh, pump stator. It's got a couple uh, little balls you stake in, a little drill bit uh, that you uh, drill a hole in right here in this yep. uh, top of this cut plug over into the circuit right here on the end. So you put the check ball in the cut plug, mm -hmm. and then when you drill at a 45 degree angle, I don't know, I'm thinking they gave you two balls, check balls, just to be sure if you lose one, because they do not say put two in there. No, they just say one. 
So and then we'll go back there and once we put our new valve in, pull that valve out of there, too, and show them what it looks like. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little razor blade. Ah. They're always up, up on everything. I mean, these guys, they're ahead of everybody. We're just going to cut the top uh, piece out. They just, they're just top notch. Now, this is a new replacement valve. You can see here. And this uh, will go right in the bore. Right in the bore. Look at the difference right there. The lands are longer. A lot more sturdy. Even here, you Even see how here. It's more, the valve's more stable. Yes, sir. Everything through here. In line. Keeping everything running, uh, I guess I would say linear. Yeah. In line. So we can put that, we'll do a vacuum test on this here. Check yes, that. Sir. And then we'll come in and put a new valve in here without boring it and check it again and see what the difference is in the two tests. Yep. So this stator does look really nice. I'm really, I don't know, there's, it's more Did it get good. it? I can't yeah. feel it in that glove. That just yeah, looks. Yeah, it's pretty good right it? there. Oh, it's hard to feel. I can feel it now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty warm. Man, yeah. So we'll just can that, put it over for the next time use when we get the Most definite. machine them back down. But it's still a uh, good product. Yeah, yeah we good, can use it later on. We can, yep. we can repair and use later. Yep. Okay, we'll go over here to our pump pocket. Pull everything out of here. Pump, veins, rotor, slide, sliders right here. And Sonex does have a updated spring and stuff where they were talking about to keep pressure on your high RPM vehicles you replace. Keeps that slide open at high RPMs where it does not close, where you're having low pressures at high RPM shifts. Did just go over that. Well, they do make that for the 4L60Es too and the 700s, so. Got some pinware, so we'll be replacing that. You can, re you can actually probably see that oh, in the yeah. camera. You can feel it too. So we're replacing all that, and of course, yeah, that's that's no good, most definitely. That's a big old it's rut. It's sad that they have so much wear in these pumps and stuff like that. It really I does. The pumps wear themselves too, even before the converter failure, and then we start having converter failure on top of it. So when the pump wears, the converter goes, you're just in trouble. You got everything failing on you. So first we're going to pull out here and uh, I can I can check it. I'd have to yeah, I would have to pull it back together. Darn it. Next time we will do that. We, will we got a tool coming in uh, so we can start checking our 1 2 3 4 drum and our third fifth and reverse clutch back here. Uh, so it's going to be a really cool tool without having to have your whole bell housing and stator yeah, put together. So this was a working unit. It was just going down because of our converter. So going to be. Oh yeah, most definite. Okay, so first off the bat, we've got our three five reverse clutch. Doesn't look bad. Not terrible at all. And we talk about selective snap ring, guys. They do make different thicknesses. You change clutch packs, they are thicker, thinner. You have to set that up back correctly. This is my thing, always keep your snap rings with your clutch packs on these units. And believe it or not, almost every unit we do, Trent, we, we have to uh, change snap rings. Every unit here we lately. We don't throw them back in there just to no. throw them back together. Never. We have to set all of our clutch, clutch packs up. So. We uh, actually bought uh, a bunch of snap rings from uh, Transstar, uh, from Raymond over there, and that's how we've got so many snap rings laying here now to, to set them up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our one, two, three, four clutch, not looking terrible at all either. It was getting dark on the edges. I bet we were probably losing a little bit of pump pressure. And then here, that pressure regulator valve is really important. So without that as well, it can't control the pressure. So we're either going to have high or low pressure um, in this unit. That's going to be one of the problems. So we'll go Erratic be back. Erratic pump pressure is terrible. Erratic pump pressure is terrible. Also, we will be going back and checking this drum. We will have a stator support, everything all good to where we can know. This is real bad cracking at this uh, weld right here. I don't know. It's the craziest thing they ever did. And the did. smallest weld you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, you tell what done by hand. No, and it has problems. As long with this piston on the inside, I don't. Here, we see, we run into it, or where is it at? On the back side, right here. 
This is the things we run into when we clean things up. Can you see, see that it? crack right there, guys. It's like three inches long. Yeah, there you go. All the way around. If you don't catch that, you put it together, you still have a non working unit. <laughs> yeah. That's why we air check our way all the way out of the drums. Yes, they sir. Four pinion planet here. Little sun gear. And you can flip it either way. Not a direction on that one. We're going to be checking our teeth here for pitting for movement up and down, side to side. Don't feel bad in that area. We'll just have to go back and get it all cleaned up. Almost, I see some pitting in there. I do. We find a lot of wear after the fact. We do, yes sir. Uh, we get these things to start getting them cleaned up after we did a video. It's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah. You got this such black fluid <laughs> covering worn parts and it's hard to just see it. Four tab washer. <coughs> Excuse me. We were placing that as well. Bearings. We got big bearings in this thing, but it's always good. Go back, check all this stuff out. You can take some of these apart. Just be careful because you can ruin the bearing, but double check everything. But right now it sounds bad. This bearing sounds bad, but I'll clean it up, get all the metal out of it, and it could be good. So you just want to double check that stuff. Set that to the side with all this. And our little dinky. Four, five, six clutch, our main failure right here, guys, the two. This thing has big problems, overheating, not being engaged, and actually being engaged. It's just a failure of the transmission. Sonex has a lot of upgrades to this, too. So, 1,000 horsepower upgrades. We're actually going to be doing it here soon. Uh, pretty sure I've got two Corvettes um, we're going to be doing here shortly. So, I can't wait to do those. We're going to be doing the Sonex. Four, five, six clutch hub here, update with power glide clutches is what they want to do. So you want to grab a power glide clutch, Dad? So if this is your four, five, six clutch here, he's going to grab a power glide clutch and show you what we're talking about. And then I'll go ahead and grab our four, five, six clutch hub. So here, this has trouble. It slings the fluid off the clutches while not applied, burns up, just a bunch of issues right here. Sonex upgrades this, drills holds to direct the fluid back to the clutch, but then also shrinks this here to allow it to accept a power glide clutch, which is twice as wide on surface area. Can you imagine getting six uh, power glide clutches in there like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Way better. That gear would be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so happy, definitely. <laughs> really would. So that's cool schooling on that, guys. Y'all gonna build a thousand horsepower, eight hundred horsepower, six L eighty, six L nineties. This is this is a we, must. We won't even put a stock clutch back in. No, there, no, we not worth it. it. They do have a Z pack upgrade, maybe for a heavy duty if you're pulling, but if you're racing on it, power glide, power glide upgrade is the way to go. Yeah. So but we can see here though too that four five six clutch was looking pretty rough. Some of them clutches really bad. It was about to be gone. Set that to the side. We'll be checking this as well. We got all of our bonded piston kit over there to be doing. And then, Dad, I don't know if you take this apart for him. I've done it a couple of times. It's funny. I've actually never, never done that. This thing, and we could call it tech, but it does not tell you what this does. But it- be some type of any clump spring. Something, just keep something quiet. It's such a, a small drag cl style clutch. It's almost like a brake shoe, I think, in a trend or something. It, that's exactly what it looks like. But every time I take it apart, there's always just a lot of metal, a lot of grit in there. So that's always just take it apart. It goes back in. You know, I mean, it does work. You can tell. Yeah. So it goes back in just like this. I'm going to have to call Greg over and tell him and talk to him about that. Because, like I said, I don't even know if they're. Power glide setup comes with that. Is that one just piece? Or? Correct. That's well, what I was thinking. To talk to him and, see what he says. and when you buy that stuff too, it just comes with the clutch hub. You got to buy all your steels, your clutches, everything oh, okay. individual. Yeah. But, what an upgrade. but what an upgrade it is. So, right off the really top. The smallest clutch in the train. It's got to be great. Oh, got to be great. I can't even believe that thing yeah. works. <laughs> It's no six clutch pack, same never, thing. Yeah, and it was never, uh, ish, uh, never addressed 
later no. years to repair that three four clutch. I always had a problem. I always had a problem. I never did. I always had a problem. You know, uh, when, it was, when the product was out there to change it and the technology was there to change it, GM just never did. Yes, sir. My dad's been doing it, I mean, 40 plus years. I'm th I just turned 30. And that's crazy, you know, and yeah, and so Z-Packs, when did they come out? You know, your first 700 was back in 85, 82, 83, early, early, six clutch systems. Yes. Uh, stuff like that. And you think now, here back in, now in 2000, they're not building them now in 2022. 22, yeah. Because you got to, they just came out with a new 4L75E, and it's got your new updates and stuff. They've got it behind their new... Uh, what is that? That 454 LS motor yeah. they just came out with, yeah. and they're calling it a 4L75. So yeah. don't know what the difference is in that transmission, but got to be good. Yeah. Handle a thousand horsepower. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so what we got next out of the box or out of the our uh, transmission here is our one, two, three, four clutch hub. Doesn't look terrible. No bushings in this one, but our bushings run here. So we want to make sure and scotch brought this stuff up. Can you? Can I see that? It looks good. Tell it's been it's been circulating some metal and it's amazing how this stuff will just slide it right off of there without even goring it. Yeah, without even touch, messing it up. Huh? So we'll be able to should be able to scotch brought that up and it'd be really nice. Now we've got our 3-5 reverse clutch hub and 2-6 clutch hub. A 3-5 reverse is right here, our 2-6 is here. Oh. Let me slow down. We did have a bearing there. This bearing runs like this on our four, five, six clutch hub and sits in here just like that on our one, two, three, four clutch hub. We got a bearing here. You do have a bushings here. This is a dimple bushing. Now I do know on the 6L80, 6L90, they do change these bushings. So when you get your kits, we always talk about don't knock your bushings out until you make sure you have them. Because if you knock it out, you don't have that bushing, you're, you're done. You're done building it. You're waiting. <laughs> Most definite. So Robert same. Our bushing kit now. We're coming with instructions in the box saying. Yes. This bushing kit is missing. This bushing. This Where is that? Existed. Oh, and another wonderful piece of paper that we get, guys, and it tells you. We'll just kind of see if we can. Sorry, I touched it. But it tells you, some of these kits don't come with things because of the. Uh, COVID. COVID. And all the stuff that's going down. Availability. Right yeah. So be sure you're checking your rebuild kits before you just tear this thing all the way out bearing bearing feels good there guys got us some metal in it but we'll tear it apart and look at it make sure it looks good no you're good dad yeah you're good it's right uh it's the bearing yeah there you go that paper we were showing you this is the bearing that we're talking about that is not in the overhaul kit right now but they're gonna be putting it back in there uh, when they get them so yep. but that is the bearing it's crazy how they can do that to you. <laughs> uh, same here. So we got another bearing. This one goes like this. Sits on our support where our two six and our low reverse is. So we'll just set that just like that. Got a lot of stuff. Got a lot of transmission still to build out there. Tear down here. Hey, these bad boys are doing good, haven't they? I seen you got a little strong armed with one of them. Snapped the head off of it the other day. But the squeegee was working. <laughs> yeah, put it to rest. Yeah, it was, okay, yeah. Whoever sent the full red one, black, finally sent to rest. We've had that since day one. <laughs> yes, we have. Very long time. So thank you very much for that. You gotta have it just right, especially on this table. There we go. <laughs> ah! You are not getting that out if you don't have those, I tell you what. So that thing's all there, and of course we've got a bevel and a square side, bevel goes out. You do not want to do it this way. I'm sure if you do it that way, it's possible to pop it out, pop, and yeah, you cash rock failure, so just don't do that. And when you go rebuild this, it tells you put it at nine o'clock. So don't just put it in there this way. Put it exactly how it, how it says to put it back. So let's grab our support. Oh, 
Some of these you have issues with. Some come right out. I'm telling you guys. And then it's heavy. <laughs> you can't pick it up out of there. You can't. You really can't. That's so funny. Okay, so guys, right here, we've got our 2 6 clutch on top. And on bottom, we have our low reverse clutch. And y'all didn't see this, but we had a bearing fall out. Sets down in there. Sets right there. Set that to the side. Go ahead, and we're going to turn it back over. We're going to get our 2 two 6 clutch out first. So on resetting this back up here, they don't have a clearance preference, but they just want it to hold. I can't remember. It's good 30, 40 PSI, and they want a good hold on that clutch, good seat. Once you hold it there to make sure it's working correctly. We always check our clearance with our dog caliper. We air oh, yeah. lift it up with air and stuff. Yeah, our, still our make sure it's not nothing yeah. outrageous. Yeah, we want to make sure our stack's right. And but all that type of stuff. See how, man. We, we, we air check like crazy. We, if you air check all the way out of the unit, you want to have a problem. Look at that little clutch. I, how does that, I mean, people really do not understand. I mean, and it's still shocking to this day. I'm 30 years old, guys, building these. And you got to think, look, look at that shaft. That shaft ain't no bigger than my thumb. Dad's got a little bit bigger fingers than I got. But that thing pushes 10, 12,000, 20,000 pounds down the road. How? Oh. How? So, so does that little clutch. Transmissions are very, very interesting, guys, and very amazing how they work. They're, somebody says it's witchcraft, but it's just magic, guys. I it. So we got 2.6 clutch here. Man, look how dry that clutch was getting. Dry. Mm -hmm. So look, getting black, too. It was about to fail. I set that to the side. Yes, sir. We'll flip this over here. So we have a piston, bonnet piston down here we will be replacing as well. <laughs> he, he's got the camera, guess who's got the air now? <laughs> no. Okay, so I can, I just wanna show y'all working this one time. See, we always check, make sure our pistons and stuff are holding. There are orifices, we're gonna have a bleed so we can't over pressurize the clutch. I'm gonna plug it a little bit though. We just want to see a good working clutch. So really that tells me our low reverse piston is working pretty well right now, but we still go back and replace all this stuff. It's just cool to check things as you're going out of the unit, tearing it down, and then going back. We will be air checking it just as I did there, going back with it, all the new stuff. Low reverse. Shoot, you, was it your low reverse that was broken the other day? Oh no, it was your 2.6 wave. Another failure out of a transmission. This was on the 2.6 clutch right here. So. Uh, that, do they make two different ways them, depending on year? I can't remember. Um, don't be getting me asking me them questions right off the top of my head. Oh, this is a 14. Right? Yes, sir. This is a 14 right here. So. Oh man, they started making these back in uh, six speeds back in, oh, I think 08, 09. Yes. But we know if one comes in, we'll see another one. We're going to start seeing them. Got our low reverse clutch here, guys. That clutch always seems like it gets hot and mm -hmm. takes a lot of heat. It's starting to get dry too. I bet our pressure regulator valve was the main issue of why this transmission probably was starting to fail. Yeah. You know, the converter couldn't pressurize the converter correctly. Um, keep it full. Um, so we got our lower reverse sprag here. Not able to take this fully apart on camera. It does have to be put in a press and press down. Pretty, pretty strong um, bevel under there. Uh, we gotta see if I can get this out. First time it picked right up out of there <laughs> and I dropped it just like that. There we go. Not a bunch of wear here. We'll look at this. This is where it runs. It would be running metal to metal. 
Really doesn't look bad. So we'll be able to scotch sprout that. Be changing our sprag here. And then. You can also flip that over too. Yes. Yes, so there's no running. Yep, there, this does not go in there either way. So yeah, you got a bad surface on that, can't get it out, this looks good. Right Flip it over. Yeah. As long as it's not all gored up, Yeah. most definite. Yeah. But that looks really good. We're gonna be able to, oh, here you go. Before you take it apart too, spins to the left, locks to the right. Remember that. Remember that. You put it in the other way, when you go to put it in gear, I'm sure it's gonna free spin. So don't do that, very important. Well, Dad. That's good there. There, we gotta get down to this lower planetary stuff here. Don't smash your fingers, it's all there, guys. That's one of the big old heavy ones. Right? Yep. And you don't want to get your fingers on the inside either. Drop it down on there. Because it's all there. Okay. So we'll be checking our ring gear, cleaning all this stuff up, making sure it looks good, no pitting on the teeth. Same here, we had uh, some failure in our lower planetary on the other transmission that came in the other day, or I think on your last 6L80E. So same thing here, check where our bushings run, make sure everything looks nice and clean, scotch brought it up. Got a bushing in here as well, bearing. Isn't that funny? The fluid, it just the seal. And them rubber gloves. <sighs> there we go. And I couldn't grab it either. Yeah. It is pretty slippery, surprisingly. So that bearing feels really good there. We'll clean it up, make sure it is good. Um, lower planetary stuff look good, but we got to go to that old good old valve body first before we get off here. Got the barrel. Got a bigger bearing down here. This is for this does not center here centers in the case and then your bushing centers this but it looks good be able to scotch brought that up new bushing new seal on the end all right now the fun part i do like valve bodies because it is the brain you can build a nice beautiful unit there but if you did not do anything good here you don't have a good working unit, so that's one of the biggest problems. Yes. Your pressure solenoids, all kinds of stuff in here. Yes. And then there's also things, and you know, I'm just thinking of it off my top of my head too. Your TPS, your mass airflow sensor, guys. Anyone talking about, oh yeah, my check engine light's been on forever and I ain't had no problems. Well, that's okay, but if you don't, if you have a new problem, you don't know. So it's kind of one of those things to get it checked before you have a problem. We got our neutral safety switch right here. And if you can see, we got our manual valve. It's stuck in there just like that, where this indicates in the dash. This is, indicates in the dash here, tells it your park, reverse, neutral drive everything like that and then this is what moves for your actual selected place. Move it out of the way. Pretty cool. Manual valve. Go ahead and take all of our tins out. This is a special tin right there. All right, watch this guys. I gotta show. Them. So, I do. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I do like my electric, but air will kill. Um, it will. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I grabbed a eight instead of a seven. These are all sevens. And then, I don't know why they did this. These are eights, I'm sorry guys. These, <laughs> and you only have two of them. <laughs> <I don't either. laughs> and they're special, and they go on the side. See, and then that's the thing with the electric too. Sometimes it don't take it all the way out. I like my electric, but <laughs> air's nice too, guys. 
That's like cars. You can't go all electric. You gotta have gas. <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? So, we we'll flip this over. Lots of times, and we do, this is a screen that keeps our metal out of, from our solenoids. But sometimes we have these that pile up, and they will, they'll push these through. Is that steel? Grab a magnet, see if that... Uh-oh. The aluminum? Yeah, oh, oh. Aluminum or steel? Aluminum or steel. Oh, steel. steel. Yeah, that's not steel. Steel, no. That tells you that little piston in there. Uh-huh. Uh, that clutch piston is... is Scraping metal. Scraping metal. And then we can, so this didn't have any solenoid problems on it. We will be checking it, but you can go in here, pull this off. And then in your rebuild kit, you have a new screen. We'll put it on there, make sure it's all cleaned up. Same with these. Check this stuff out. This is your pillow switch, just your manifold stuff. Same, same thing. You're going to be changing these out, changing your seals out, going from there. We just want to make sure we have a good working unit. And then, last but not least, all your good old switching valves. It's really how uh, the Chrysler uses switching valves. Do what that, Dad? Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. 68 RFE stuff like that. Yeah. I did notice the other day they got a little spot over here. There we go. Just want to be easy. Oh, I want to do it different. Sorry, guys. That's my fault. I don't think I got all of them in there. You're going to flip it over first. So your check balls are in the right location. I'm controlling the camera for the first time. Everybody's eyes are probably twisting. Are they? You've been watching me or what? Okay, let's see if we got them in there. Oh, man, look at that pile of metal. Yep, okay, so I did get them in there. We got one, got two, got three, got four, five. There's more than that. Oh, yep. Yeah. Six. And on your newer ones, they are having updated the valve body and stuff to slow our clutches down. I guess they had some timing issues in this. And, uh,. You'll notice here, we've got some added holes, added check balls to slow some of that down. Actually, right here, there should be a check ball. If you notice, there's no check ball place in the place for that check yeah, ball. That's why I was going to put it down on there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right there. Where the light version does have that. Mm -hmm. And then also, your kit. This tail is very important on replacing your select selector valve springs here. Your select valve two and three your select clutch valve. One, two, three, four, five, six. All there, put those to the side. Compressor regulator valve. You got your TCC regulator valve. You got an actuator valve here, or I'm sorry, here. And then you have your select valve two and three. Go back, all this stuff gets replaced with uh, Transgo or Sonex products. This is a main part of building a transmission right here, guys. You can build a nice transmission here, but if you did not get this stuff cleaned up, selecting valves, switching valves, you don't have anything. Ooh. We just go. I about did. Well, we got a little bit to clean up, but good unit. We can work with this one. What do you think, Dad? I thought it 
take some parts just like always. Couldn't take some parts like always. Alright guys, y'all know how batteries can be. Uh, just had one shut off on us, so no big deal. What we're getting to though, this is going to be a good rebuildable unit. It is going to take some hours to clean all this stuff up. Going to take some parts to get it fixed, but nothing we can't do here at Precision Transmission. So if you need anything, of course, give us a huge thumbs up and go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Do not forget to hit the notification button. That's the most important thing to keep where you don't have to worry about us posting and going back and looking. You are notified when we post our next video. We'll see you next time.